Hi, um, I'm Luca Bogoni with CareStream, and I, um, today I'm here to speak with Elizabeth Estes. She is the executive director of the OSIC organization. OSIC organization is a fantastic organization, uh, but I will let Elizabeth <laughs> to speak about that. Well, thank you very much, Luca. I appreciate that. Um, OSIC is the Open Source Imaging Consortium. And we are a collaborative between academia, industry, and philanthropy. We bring together radiologists, pulmonologists, and artificial intelligence uh, experts around the world. It's a global consortium. We are a 501c3. We are a not-for-profit. And we're designed to make radical progress on behalf of patients living with fibrosing lung diseases, interstitial lung diseases, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, and all progressive lung diseases. So these patients then, uh, from the moment that they are diagnosed, what is the life expectancies? Yeah, well, first of all, getting them diagnosed is difficult. So it's what's considered a diagnosis of elimination. Oh. So it takes about 26 months for a patient, once they, once they present symptoms of shortness of breath or a dry cough, to actually get diagnosed. They have to be referred to a pulmonologist to get diagnosed. Once that happens, 80% of the patients are gone within five years. So it is a fatal disease. And imagine, if you will, once you finally get diagnosed and then finally go to the pulmonologist and they say you have um, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis and it is a fatal disease, your first question is going to be, well, how long do I have? Yeah. And the yeah. answer is they don't know. So there's no staging of this disease. The diagnosis takes a long time. And right now we have no ability to predict response to therapy. So all things that we're trying to work on at OSIC. So how is OSIC helping in this endeavor? Well, we've amassed so far, we have a committed number of almost 17,000 high-res CT scans, which is great, and clinical data and appended clinical data. So it's very precise yeah. in the clinical data that we have appended with the, with the uh, scans. And as you know, artificial intelligence today can do a lot with patterns. Yeah. And so what we're trying to do is build algorithms to be able to diagnose it sooner, figure out which patients will be the rapid progressors, and then also yeah. figure out how they will respond to therapy. So, it's, all of this is really exciting. I, I think that these offer amazing opportunities. And so, as we are a care stream, and we are primarily focused on x-ray as right. a modality, right. um, how do you think that x-ray can play a role in, in all of this. You know, what's interesting is if you talk to the experts today, they'll say, and the standard of care is, right now, it has to be a high-res CT scan to actually be diagnosed right. with, a, with an ILD or a, a progressing fibrosing lung disease. However, mm -hmm. what we know is that they, in this diagnosis of elimination, their first standard of care is going to be an x-ray. They'll have many x-rays. With, with everything else. Right, with everything else. The yeah. other thing is, it has to play a part because yeah. two-thirds of the world don't have high-res CT machines, For they sure. have x-rays. Sure. And so what we believe, maybe in the past, radiologists might say, well, we can't see a lung disease, fibrosing lung disease on an x-ray, yeah. but we don't know what the machines can see. Right. And so our responsibility at OSIC is to bring in the modalities of x-rays, which thank you to CareStream, because you're helping us do that. Yeah. Bring in the modalities of x-rays, and yeah. then work with our AI experts to try to see if there's something we can foretell in those x-rays that might lead to understanding that this person could have a progressive disease. Yeah, and I, and I, and I believe that there's been some study that have uh, evaluated yeah. and quantified ILDs in uh, chest x-rays. Well, yeah, and x-rays today aren't what x-rays were in the past. For and sure. You know, For that. Sure. you know that better than anybody. Yes. So the quantification mm -hmm. of x-rays is definitely something that we've seen in publications and we believe we will put into practice as we bring more x-rays into the OSIC database. So how is... I, I, how is... Um, X-ray going to come into the yeah. OSIC database? So right now, we're actually starting to ask our partners, our um, academic institution partners, and our other partners to bring X-rays paired with HRCTs, yeah. but we're very <laughs> excited. We just announced that the European Respiratory Society, an initiative funded by CareStream, which yeah. we're thank you for, yeah. called Project Opus. So yeah. Project Opus, uh, Opus, if you think about it, not just the wine, yeah. but Opus is a harmonies, right? Bringing yeah. people together. And so Opus will be a project, uh, a pilot project that will start after the first of the year and we're gonna consent 100 patients. Uh, okay. These 100 patients will give us access to their electronic medical records, their x-rays, yep. their x-rays leading up to the diagnosis, 
their high-res CT scans, and then in exchange, we're gonna give them a home spirometry, a Bluetooth home spirometry device. Right. What we're gonna be able to do with that is, we're gonna be able to find the patterns in the EMRs that we believe are there for this misdiagnosis. We're gonna take the x-rays and pair them with the HRCTs, and we're going to build algorithms to look at those x-rays specifically to see what kind of quantification we can do, novel biomarkers we can find in those x-rays that would then lead to these HRCTs knowing that this person has it. And then the other cool part that I know you guys have been really powerful and behind is this home spirometry. Yeah. Because the other thing mm -hmm. we can find is, is whether an issue for this disease is yeah. air quality an issue, and we'll have yeah. all of that with our uh, with our home spirometry device from Patient Empower. Well, this is really exciting. I I want to thank you for helping us understand first of all the magnitude of this disease. I want to thank OSIC for all the efforts that they're putting into collecting this data and making it available to a large uh, population of researchers and to afford the pursuit of. Um, of a therapy and or a, um, a way to monitor, detect, and, and follow up eventually patients. Well, it's actually me who should be thanking you, not only for your support at CareStream, but OSIC wouldn't be here without the brain power you helped us when we built the database. No. So thank you for your architecture brain and your building of the database, and thanks for what CareStream does and, and supporting all of this efforts. All right. Thank you for your thanks, time. Luca. Pleasure.